Hello, everyone. We're so delighted to have you join us today. I'm Gail Brechting, the president of the Association of Concert Bands, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this installment of the ACB Connects. These sessions are sponsored by ACB. We are an international nonprofit organization whose mission is to foster excellence in concert band music through performance education and advocacy. We have just a few housekeeping items before we begin today's discussion. ACB Connects is being recorded. Today's session will be archived along with other previously recorded sessions on the ACB Connects page on the ACB website. We welcome your questions. If you have any questions or comments for our guest, please submit them in the chat addressed to everyone and as many as time allows will be addressed. With us today is Captain Christina Muncie. She's the commander of the United States Air Force Heritage of America Band. With her experience in producing concerts by the concert band, Singing Sergeants, Max Impact, the Airmen of Note, and other groups, she is the perfect person to talk about our topic today. Welcome, Christina. Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. Great. Um, to help us understand who we have on the call today, we'll be using the Zoom poll feature for the first time. So please answer these three short questions that will appear on your screen. And then after a few seconds, for the input and your answers, the poll results will appear for us all to see. There we go. People are getting the hang of this. It's something new for us. Are you seeing the results? Christina, can you see the results yet? I am not seeing any results yet, no. Okay. Oh, there's a note that says the, the poll disappeared before we could finish. Uh-oh, well, that's not good. There it is. Did it pop back up? Yes, it popped back up. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Wonderful, I can see some results now. Yes. This is helps us as we do the discussion today too. All right. Does everyone feel like they have finished? All right, terrific. <laughs> okay. It's, you know, uh, I'm gonna move on, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of mine. Here we go. You know, Christina, it was a real pleasure to have you um, as the 2022 ACB Convention Band conductor in Santa Fe in May. And besides the great work you did with the band, you did this wonderful presentation on engaging audiences. And so I felt that maybe more of our members might really enjoy getting to hear a little bit of this as well as some discussion and some questions about how to engage these audiences. So we're gonna gain from your guidance and your insights today. So Absolutely. I'd like, like to let you go ahead and speak for a minute and then we'll, we'll, we'll get started, go ahead. Certainly, yes. No, I thank you all for the opportunity to chat with you today. Um, I, I'll share my presentation with you all shortly. Uh, feel free if you wanna type your questions into the chat box and Gail will ask them as we go along and there will definitely be time uh, at the end as well to, to ask any questions that you feel maybe haven't gotten answered. I know some people uh, send questions ahead of time and I'll try to address those as we go along. Um, but a lot of this experience that I'm gonna share with you is just hard and earned experience that I've learned along the way. I do have a little bit of background in public affairs training that the Air Force sent me to receive uh, as a part of being an officer in the band. Uh, but a lot of it has just been on the job training, learning from folks who know a lot about engaging, engaging audiences, both live and virtually. And sometimes just getting an idea or someone who has an idea and we try it out and we see what works and we see what doesn't work. And so a lot of trial and error. Um, and so from there we get some best practices. And so what I'll talk about today is some of what I've learned along the way. And um, I, in some cases, I'll certainly share with you where we, maybe we made some mistakes or where we felt something worked, 
one way and it didn't work another way, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will or won't work for you and your organization. And I'll certainly talk about that a little bit along the way, because one of the questions that did come in early uh, early on was, how, how, how do we do things differently for a community band versus a military band? Right, so I'll, I'll right. certainly talk about that because it is it, we are right. talking about different animals, what I do in the Air Force and what we do in community bands. But I, I do think there is a lot of crossover that we can take advantage of. Oh, absolutely. And because, you know, many of the bands uh, are coming into the 21st century in so many ways where our standard ways of advertising for so long, we're putting up posters, selling tickets, word of mouth, uh, things in the newspaper, the local media, you know, uh, maybe a local television station, things like this, if you were a community band. But now we're starting to obviously be in a more virtual world. And these are the things that when I went to your um, presentation that really excited me as a conductor myself of, of a community band is, wow, I can do that. I mean, that's something I already, some of that I have already on platforms and didn't realize I could use it perhaps the way that you engaged um, and talked about this a little bit. So that's why I was really excited to have you in, involved with this. Um, some information might be about the virtual news, um, how we do radio, how you do local TV, how you do Facebook, Instagram, all the different uh, platforms, you know. So, uh, and I, maybe I'll just let you get started on how you started your presentation. And, and then as time goes on, we can do some questions as well as I'll just add in a few of mine. Okay. Certainly. Yes. So I, okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started by sharing my screen. And so let's see, make sure that that's good. And I'm going to get the right presentation. So hopefully y'all should be seeing, let's see. Let me, hold on. Let me, I'm going to close this and we're going to try that again. So hopefully y'all should be seeing uh, the splash page my, uh, of the presentation. So this is entitled Engaging Audiences in the 21st Century. So exactly what Gail was talking about as far as using some of this modern technology, current events ideas uh, to try to engage audiences differently than maybe we have done in the past. So some of the things that we're gonna talk about, well, a little bit of a quick introduction. Then we're going to talk about the definition of success, and this is where we're going to talk a lot about um, how you can frame in your mind with your organization how this works for you versus how it works for me in the Air Force Band. And I'll talk about how we in the Air Force Band define success, uh, which may or may not be how you and your organization define success. So this is something that will be important for you to figure out because then how you apply these techniques could be a little bit different. And then we'll talk about the engagement strategies themselves. We'll spend a lot of the time on the virtual engagement strategy, strategies because I think that's the one where we all still have some, some growth to do and myself and my organization as well. I was telling some folks before we started, I, I love revisiting this presentation because every time I do, it gives me an opportunity to take a look at what my organization is doing, what we're doing, how we can do better, what has changed even in the last couple of months um, and how we maybe need to do things differently. But then we'll also talk about how do we do this in a live engagement setting as well as we are, we're all getting back to live performances after COVID. How can we adjust how we do business so that we're engaging audiences a little bit better? So let's first talk a little bit about defining success. So what does it mean to have a successful organization? What does it mean to have a successful season, a success, successful concert? And that's gonna change depending on your organization. So maybe your definition of a success is a packed audience. You just, you wanna get people there because it's, it's great putting this music together, but for you, if you don't put that uh, music in front of an audience, that that's, it's, you're missing the mark somewhere. Maybe that's part of your definition of success. Maybe your definition of, of success is just to have a good time. You wanna get community members together to make music, to just have fun and then the concert is that added bonus at the end and you get an audience there, but really it's the rehearsal process. It's the growth as a, a group through the rehearsals and it's the growth as an individual musician. That is also a very acceptable definition of success. Um, maybe a definition of success for you and your organization <laughs> is playing some of the, the just the gems in band literature, some of those really heavy hitting pieces of music, things that are complicated, that are hard, that take time, energy, a great deal of talent. Maybe your definition of success is some combination of these three things, and maybe it's something else entirely different. But that's something that as we go through these engagement strategies, 
what your definition of success is, is going to help play into how you interact with your audiences. Because at the end of the day, there is a, an audience, there is a concert. And so in that performance, how do we then engage with those audiences? So let me talk to you a little bit about how we define success in Air Force bands. We honor those who have served, and we do this in a number of ways. This is a photograph from Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, DC. They perform 800 congressionally mandated funerals every year. And then all of the other bands stationed across the United States and around the world perform at funerals as well. Usually just taps, not a large ceremonial band like you see in this photo, but we honor those who have served as that they are then laid to rest. But we also honor those who serve, who are still living. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, we also inspire people. We inspire people to greater patriotism, and hopefully we inspire the next generation to serve as well. Um, I love this photo because I tell you what, two <laughs> electric guitars and four planes flying through the air. I mean, <laughs> I, I, find, I feel inspired looking at that photo. <laughs> Absolutely. Just the energy in itself. Yeah. And the youth. I, know, right? I like the youth in that as well. I, I will tell those two gentlemen you said that. They will they'll Please appreciate do. that. Because <laughs> they're not as young as they look. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> okay. Well, you tell them. <laughs> but a, a well-framed photo for sure. Um, and so then we also connect. So we connect the United States military with the public, but then we also connect the United States with a with the global community. And so one of the ways that we connect. Uh, this is a photo taken in New York City last year, where I had the opportunity to be on the Today Show to honor America for the 4th of July. And in between shots, we had, there were folks on the plaza. If you watch the Today Show in the morning, you know that folks are out on the plaza and we just have an opportunity to talk. And I got to hear where people were from, what they were doing in New York for the 4th of July. A lot of folks have military stories that they like to share. And so we as bands in the United States Air Force, connect and we use music to do all of these things. So for us, we use music, our definition of success is using music to honor, inspire and connect with people. And we do that through live performances and we do that virtually as well. So now let's talk a little bit about what audiences want today. And this is something that is constantly in flux. And so we have to continuously reevaluate what we want to or what we think our audiences want and we can also look at ourselves and what do we as audience members want when we go to see a band concert first and foremost audiences want authentic experiences um and they want they want to feel that there, there's something real going on they want to be given a show but they want to know the the human behind the show that's being given as well and i think we can use that to our advantage they also want something different so we are in battle, if you will, with Netflix, <laughs> Hulu, Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, Apple TV, name a streaming service, YouTube. I mean, there's so many things out there that we are vying for people's attention. And so to get them away from something else that they could be doing with their time, we need to give them something different. And what can that be? That'll be some of what we talk about. Mm -hmm. They like curated events. And so when you think of a curated event, imagine if you go on to your Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, pick, pick one of your streaming services that you're on. And they have these algorithms that after a while, when you've picked, you watched a couple of shows and they go, okay, you're into romantic comedies. Here are some things you might like. That's kind of that curated experience as far as here are some options of things that we think you might like based on what you've done before. Mm -hmm. Decision autonomy. So again, we have that curated experience. We have these options. They wanna be able to choose audiences to say, oh, okay, I'm in the mood for this kind of a romantic comedy or, you know, I'm not really into the rom-com today. Maybe I'm gonna go outside and take a walk in the woods, something like that. So that decision autonomy interacting with the audiences during the show to give them that mm -hmm. opportunity to feel like they they have a stake in what's going on. Interaction is key and it can be very simple all the way up to incredibly complicated and, and we'll talk about that as we discuss our engagement strategies. So Gail, let me pause here for a moment and, and see if there's anything you want to interject in. 
Well, I think that we, I'd like to go back for just a second and see if the polls have changed at all. So if we could have that, um, somebody said there were only two questions. Um, and uh, I have a question from one of our people here. It says, how many of the AC Bay bands have ticketed admission concerts? My concerts have a $22 adult price. Therefore success is to not lose money on the regular basis. How do others handle this situation? And that is certainly something we can either speak to now or we can talk about uh, towards the end when we get more general questions because it's a good, a very good question, but I, but I think we'll put it a little bit towards the back in general questions so that we can have other people also sure. chat in on that, okay? And um, right, some people are already answering his question, which is appropriate. Please do in the chat if you would like to. Yeah, one of the things that um, I just, going along with some of this engagement um, that you've just discussed and that I found fascinating as well, not that I don't do it or don't think other bands do it, but I think it's something that is a very simple and a free way to engage. And that is the, the pre-concert and the post-concert mingling. Now, in, in, you know, with COVID and everything, we've all been hesitant to mingle. Uh, however, uh, I think when you do things outdoors, it is something that can be done and maybe thought through a little better for indoor concerts with the pre especially uh, kind of mingling. So what kind of um, examples would you like to give on that, Christy? Oh, sure. Yes. So the I, I'm a big fan of before, during and after concert mingling and the during, like if your show has an intermission, it's a good opportunity to get out and chat with the audience. Um, Pre-COVID, so I'll talk about pre-COVID and I'll talk about okay. what we're kind of, what we we're doing now these days. Uh, sure. Pre-COVID, what we would do with Air Force bands is we would not send the entire band out into the audience because sometimes that can be a little overwhelming. <laughs> and, and honestly, some people are are not real comfortable. You know, some people are are very shy or very introverted and, and we want to respect that those different kinds of personalities. So we would find the folks in the band who were comfortable engaging with the audience, who were more extroverted, who wanted to go out. And we could usually find anywhere between five and 10 people in the band who would be willing to go out and engage with the audience. And, and they would go out before the concert, during intermission and afterwards as well. And the conversations were oftentimes as simple as, we're so excited that you're here. Thank you for coming out today. A lot of times for us in the military, we, we have a built-in question because people will say, well, well, well they'll actually even just, they will, they'll tell us, hey, I served or my daughter right. serves or my son serves or my husband mm -hmm. served or my wife serves. And then they'll, yeah. they'll want to share their story. And so that's a really great way for us to start engaging with them. And so maybe they're talking about um, their son who serves in the Navy. And I can say, oh, you know what? That's, I, we're, that's thank you for your service. Thank you for supporting your son in his service. By the way, we, are, we have a section at the end of the show that honors the family members of those who serve. So we hope that you will take that opportunity to stand and be recognized. And you know, it just, it creates a brief conversation and, and then we right. move on uh, with more, right. more people. Right. right. I think with uh, the community bands, uh, at least I find, cause I, I ask mem my members to do the same thing. Um, I find we almost have an advantage in some ways because we, we kind of know our people out there and you go out and you know that this man, you know, was one of the last serving in World War II. I have had a few of those and I always make it a point to go out and say hello to them and, and, and thank them and things like that, or just people that you know have been sponsors or new people. So, you know, I think we, it works so nicely and it's, it's free <laughs> to go out and, and they just feel so honored. I mean, we all feel that way if we get a chance to, I felt that way when I met you. I mean, you have done a lot in your life and you, you know, we brought you in and, and this and that. So I was, I really wanted to meet you. I think that is always there between uh, people who, who care about other people and, and in the audiences. So the mingling is great. One of the things I've done that isn't just that, but even indoors. Now, indoor mingling, uh, one thing I've done, and please share some of the things you've done, is I've brought in high school uh, students who are uh, from the theater. And so if it's just like we're doing a Halloween concert, then I would have them all dressed up in superheroes and princesses and things like this. And that's a chance for those children to have that engagement somehow with someone that has to do with what they're gonna see. Uh, you know, it's that kind of thing. And, and it's amazing what it does for these children that may be the only time they've ever been to that theater and now they, they can have a story. So I'm sure you have some that you do also uh, indoors if it's gonna be pre-COVID perhaps might be some of the stories you have to tell. 
Oh, absolutely. Well, so I mean, we, we you know, with during COVID, uh, we we can still interact with audiences, but we take additional precautions. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll you know we'll have our folks masked even if if it's not required. And these days, most places masks are not required. But because a lot of times our audiences are a little older, we'll we'll be masked to to make sure that we are are being uh, careful of their health. Uh, we will also we used to go up and shake hands with everybody anymore. If someone wants to shake our hands, we'll let them initiate, or you know, maybe it's just an elbow bump or a fist bump. Yeah. We have hand sanitizer as well, that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But then as far as other, other ways to interact with folks, um, you know, we, we will oftentimes bring students up on stage with us as well, either to perform or sing. We will engage with dancers as well and integrate them into our shows, uh, depending mm-hmm. on the concert and the time of year. Mm-hmm. So your your idea with the the Halloween show and, and uh, the kids in yeah. the costumes, I think, is is fabulous. Sure, because sure. you're getting some people to come from that high school as well uh, to be involved. And you know, bottom line, it's about investing, uh, having those people be invested um, themselves within the day or the time that you're there, and then hopefully they'll want to support that again and come again or whatever, also empowering them, especially in the services that I'm sure there's a lot of that with the hope, like you say, is that it's, I know um, the police do this a lot with schools. Well, they're, they come in and they want, they want children to feel comfortable around them and they, they want them to feel that way. And that's the same kind of, exactly the same thing we're trying to do with our groups and your groups is to have people feel that we love them and that we're, we care about them and we want them to come and we're doing this for them, you know, so it's an investment and an empowering, of course. Good. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Yeah. Um, now, here's the question that I've often wondered is, um, I love how you have uh, audience participation ideas and some of the things that you already discussed. But one question that I had and someone else mentioned too is, what if your program is a very serious program? What if it is one of, like you said, you're, you're gonna play the gems of the band literature and, and this kind of thing. Um, and so it's a more serious setting. What are some things that you might do with that in mind or other people who are on the call or the uh, connects today? If you have some things, please put it in chat. These are the reasons we're doing this. Uh, ideas as to uh, how to engage your audiences in a more serious situation. Yeah, that's a great question. And and so one of the things that we do in Air Force Band concerts is all of our concerts are scripted. And so uh, in between not every single tune, but most tunes, they will there will be some talking. Sometimes it's by the conductor, but sometimes it's it's by uh, a, a member of the band who narrates or sometimes we bring in a guest MC. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I'll talk about a little bit later in the presentation as well. And this is a way that I think you can craft audience engagement for something that is a little bit more of a serious program or a little bit more of a, um, a heavier program because it's not something where you're gonna have people jumping up and down and clapping and singing, but in ha- writing that script and, and sharing the message of what the music is about, why you chose it, why it's important to perform, that is a form of engaging the audience. I know when I was brought up in, in my high school band back in the day, we would present concerts where from when the lights went down at the beginning of the concert to when the lights went up, either intermission or once the concert was over, not a single word was spoken by anybody on stage. And there are some organizations, some bands, some orchestras out there that still operate under that same paradigm. And it it builds this divide, I believe, between the Mm -hmm. audience and the performers. And something as simple as a script to carry the audience member along on your story can engage them. Uh, So it's almost like they're watching a a live movie at that point. I I did a program, this is many years ago, but it was a Memorial Day program. Um, And of course, Memorial Day is to honor those who lost their lives, who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. And I designed the program to be a very serious program because I I think that's a very serious concept of people who have made that ultimate Mm -hmm. sacrifice. And the scripting was very carefully designed to keep the audience engaged. I I told the story of someone who decides to enlist in the military, who joins the military, um, and then kind of the the celebration of their sacrifice at the end of the the show. It ended with God bless America and his big old flag at the the end. It It was a very nice moment. The audience was just they loved it. They thought it was absolutely fabulous. It was, it was a great way to oh, honor the, those memories. But again, it was all about the scripting on that one to, to draw everybody in and engage with them that way. Right. One of the things that was uh, just brought up in the chat is sometimes if the conductor is the one speaking, they sometimes maybe talk too long. 
Um, it could be the opinion of whoever is doing it or, but if that's something that they are, you know, we do, a, um, we try to evaluate every so often to see what different people say. And if it's an evaluation by the audience and by the uh, ensemble members, you do get a chance to, to really look at, you know, what is, where is everything happening? Are we sticking out too much in this place or is this not enough? And uh, that might be a place for that to be done in a roundabout way so no one is you know, having any problems with feelings or the fact that they think they're doing all, all this and they're not getting anything back from it. Uh, any suggestions along that line? Well, I, I mean, bottom line, public speaking is, it truly is an art and narrating is an art. And I personally, I have found speaking extemporously from the box is incredibly challenging. And it's really easy for me to get wrapped up and go on way too long and miss the whole point of what I'm trying to say. And so if I'm going to be speaking from the box during a concert, I have to set myself up ahead of time and be very careful about what I'm going to say. I practice how I say it. And if I'm really struggling, then I'll, I'll even time myself because mm -hmm. sometimes that, that sense of time, it's longer than you think or it's shorter than you think. And we, we just lose track altogether. And Absolutely. so I would say if you have someone who struggles with just talking too much and spinning and, and not really uh, having an easy time of moving smoothly from one concept to the next and then moving into the next piece, script it out. Mm -hmm. And either the conductor, him or herself, can, can read it from, from the podium or, or if there's like a music stand over on the side and it can be a very formal scripting sort of thing right. or a band member who's comfortable. And, and again, it can either be scripted or if you've got someone who is comfortable with the extemporary yeah. speaking, say, these are the points I want you to hit, go. Some people right. are really, really good at that. Yeah. Some people are, um, I am not. If I speak <laughs> extemporously, it's because I've practiced a ton. Um, <laughs> and then again, the idea of having a guest MC is fantastic mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, and there's a lot of different options on how to get guest MCs as a part of your program. Right, right. Uh, thank you very much. Um, in your slide presentation, I remember you talked about uh, involving the people's favorite media. Do you want to continue on with your presentation and come into that? Uh, however, yes, you would like yeah, to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me, uh, we'll, we'll kind of roll, roll into this because there, okay. I, I'll, I'll definitely talk a lot about that. And then actually some of the okay. things that we've discussed, you'll, you'll see um, probably pop back up again, yeah. but okay. um, Great. We'll continue that conversation. So in the engagement strategies, like I mentioned before, we're going to talk about two different, we're going to talk about our virtual primarily through social media. And then we'll also talk about our live engagement strategies, which we've already discussed quite a bit. We'll go a little bit more into that in the second half of this presentation. Okay. So first, let's talk a little bit about Facebook. Um, first off, Facebook is is the social media platform that Air Force Bands generally focuses on the most. We, we tend to lean on Facebook and YouTube primarily, a little bit of Instagram, occasionally Twitter. Um, one question I get a lot is, are you on TikTok? And unfortunately, as long as there's any sort of an association whatsoever with China, we will never be allowed to use TikTok. We, I will look at what's going on on TikTok. Uh, I don't have a TikTok account myself, but um, I discovered that Sesame Street is now on TikTok. And so for my son, I think I might have to get an account. Um, <laughs> it's, it's adorable. It's charming. It's, it's the TikTok account we all need right now. Um, yeah. So I, I watch what's trending on TikTok because we can emulate some of those things on the other platforms. But I, I say that, and that's why I'm starting with Facebook. Facebook continues to be the largest social media platform in the world with almost 3 billion monthly users around the world. And so we in the Air Force bands, we go by the numbers, that's where we put all of our efforts, but that doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of all of the other platforms as well. Uh, but so talking about Facebook, I have just a couple of sample posts because I, I know in my band right now, I'm the commander of the Heartland and Heritage of America bands uh, stationed at Langley Air Force Base in Virginia and also off at Air Force Base in Nebraska. 
And the, the one thing that my folks struggle with quite a bit is how do we post more frequently in a way that engages our audiences? Because it, it is time consuming and coming up with fresh content all the time can be very challenging. Social yes. media is a full-time job for a lot of companies. And sometimes they have massive teams working solely on social media. And my team, like y'all, we're not full-time social media experts. So my clarinet player might also be my social media manager, and among other things. So we're always looking for ways to get in compelling content that is consistently posted. That's the key. It's got to be compelling content that's consistently posted and that keeps your social media pages active. So this first example I have for you, this is from a concert with the band in Washington, DC. We did a guest artist series with Eric Whitaker, which was a fabulous concert. It was almost all his music. He conducted pretty much the entire concert. It was a really a lot of fun. And this particular post, this, this was twofold. First, it was an advertisement for the concert coming up, as you can see, our final guest artist, artist concert is tonight, or sorry, tomorrow night. It get, gives the time, it gives the place, but then there's a little two minute video. So for folks who can't come to the concert, they are able to see a little bit of what we were doing. So that way we, again, we, we try to reuse content, have multiple purposes for what we do so that we have our local audience in the DC area who was possibly able to come to the concert, but the, DC band has followers all around the world. So if someone is right. in Australia, obviously they can't make it to the concert that night, but they can still partake uh, at least a little bit through this post. Okay, okay. Uh, additionally, we like to harness what we're trying to say with other things that are going on in the world. So this second post, you can see this is talking about Earth Day. And we are taking this opportunity to showcase our the ceremonial brass in Washington, D.C. They are the ones that do those 800 congressionally mandated funerals every single year. And in this post, it highlights one photo from every season because those members are out there regardless of the weather. It doesn't matter if it's 100 degrees. It doesn't matter if it's 10 degrees and snowing. The, the funerals still happen. And even during COVID, the funerals did not stop. And so... We said, hey, it's Earth Day. Let's highlight the fact that our folks are out there the entire time, uh, all seasons. And then lastly, one thing that we do in Air Force bands an awful lot, and I, I absolutely encourage you and your organizations to do as well, is we recycle content as much as we can. If we're gonna put effort into anything, we wanna be able to use it in more than one way and sometimes post it multiple times. So this last post, we had the opportunity to record a song called Prayer for Ukraine, uh, very close to the beginning of when Russia invaded Ukraine. And we wanted to show our support for folks over in Ukraine uh, experiencing that conflict, experiencing that war. And so we created a video, we posted it, but then for several weeks afterwards, we continued to post it so that we could continue to show support. And also, mm. again, if, if we're going to put energy, time, resources into something, we want to be able to use it more than once and in more than one way. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's exactly right. And then you're you're building on what you've already got too, which is helps when you only have one person usually uh, doing this. I find that some of the people that we have used too, they want, they're not generating it. So they're expecting us to generate it and give it to them. They'll do all mm -hmm. of the work that it takes to put it onto the various platforms, but uh, but we have to have someone else. So that's who it really isn't just one person involved. Um, sticking on that for just a moment, I, I want you to, um, another thing that I was thrilled about with the presentation and I went, well, why couldn't we do that in community bands? And that is um, tapping to the resources that we have within our adult ensembles. That's what we are, primarily our adults in our ensembles. Um, and so many of them retired and who have been all kinds of things in their lifetime. I sometimes think we don't really uh, utilize the gifts and the talents and the time that these people have put into their lives and use it within what they love already, or they wouldn't be there, an ensemble uh, that you're conducting in or you're playing in. Um, that's something that I was thrilled to hear that the Air Force bands do, which is almost an expectation. Uh, that, okay, I'm going to be a clarinet player in this band or a trumpet player, but I'm also going to find out maybe 
what else did you, what are, are you interested in other things? Your people tend to come to you, I think, younger <laughs> than some of the people that the community bands get coming to them to some level. So, but I still, I still know from experience that when we went to all virtual things uh, a year and a half, two years ago, I did four virtual concerts because I found that I had two music editors within my ensemble who wanted to learn more. And uh, we couldn't have done it without people like that. They learned a lot. And so I'm just sharing this couple stories with you because I think it's important that people start really thinking about what they really have within their ensembles to help with the things you're talking about today, Christy. So thanks. Absolutely. And, and to just can carry that thread a little bit further, Gail, you're, you're absolutely right. Everyone in every Air Force band, we hire them to play an instrument, to sing, to be an audio engineer, but, but they all have additional duties that they are required to fulfill as well. And it, it could be a variety of different things, but some of those additional duties are along the lines of creating content for social media. So for example, I have a guitar player that just moved into my band. He's been in Air Force bands for several years now, but he, he was stationed in Germany. Now he's in my band here in Virginia and he is getting trained up on how to use Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, we have another person who he is just a, incredibly talented on many, many different instruments. He's a piano player by trade, but he also sings. He also plays guitar. That that cool shot with the two guitar players with the four planes over top. Yeah. One of those guitar players is actually my piano player. Ah. <laughs> but he also decided he wanted to learn how to use something called Ableton. Uh, which is a really neat music program that you can use with popular music or even concert bands as well. It's an electronic track that you can play on top of with live music. So he got spun up, learned how to use that program. Um, okay. it, it's the Actually, the, the Prayer for Ukraine video uh, on mm -hmm. the far right of your screen, that one was filmed by folks in our band and edited both audio and video by folks in the band. And the person who basically put this whole idea together, produced the whole thing. He's a drum set player in the yeah, band. Yeah. Um, and so some of it came from, hey, who's interested in doing this thing? Mm -hmm. And some of it came from, okay, we need someone to do this thing, whether mm -hmm. you're interested or not. <laughs> Who is, who's interested before yeah, we start volunteering? Gonna... Right, right. Um, and, and that, that's, so usually that's part of it. we can... And that is part of it. You usually can find people who, who have some sort of an interest, uh, mm -hmm. who, who want to learn more. And then, like you mentioned, you, you found that you had two music editors in your band. Uh, one of the piano players in Washington, D.C. came into the Air Force with some really good graphic design skills uh -huh. that we were able to put to use. He brought that with him. Now, we're, we're continuing his training to help him grow in those skills. Mm -hmm. But a lot of folks come in already interested in audio production, video production, graphic design, right. photography, writing right. skills. These are all things that we need for virtual engagement. Right. right. And sometimes it's hard to find uh, the people, at least I know in the Midwest, which is where I've lived most of my life, um, are very humble people. And it's sometimes hard for them to, or to think that it's worth sharing that they've done these things. So that's where you have to get out and do you know, a little more investigation or perhaps just keep digging, just talking about it, I think is a, is a good way or putting out your board members to talk within the sections a little bit about, well, what kind of stuff have you done in the past? Would you be interested in these things? You know, using your network is, is a really great source of doing that. Um, one of the people on the chat, I just wanted to share with you, Christy, is talking about Canva, C-A-N-V-A, which is a create videos on them and then posting it to Facebook. I, I don't know this, um, this media source, or the source of this, but I'm going to look it up and find out about it. It sounds like it's something good and a number of other people are saying it. Do you have any knowledge of this? I'm not familiar with it at all. Uh, but again, that that's something that's what a, sure. I'm going to write that down because how yeah. cool that yeah. might be something mm -hmm. that I can take back to, yeah. to my folks as another right. video, video editing tool. Absolutely. And one person said uh, that they highly recommend scheduling posts ahead of time, which I'm sure you do. Uh, and spent 30 minutes before this where I created events for the first half of the season and scheduled our posts out for the next two weeks. Absolutely, it's all about, it's, it's, it's all about programming and whether we think programming is performing a concert or performing the advertising ahead of time for the concert, sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle, but it's whoever said that, uh, good for you. That's a lot of uh, Bianca Patterson. 
So wonderful work. And I, I know you must do this as well as getting that calendar way in advance to prepare for when we actually get to do the concert. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the joke that we always have in, in Air Force bands is the 4th of July and Christmas are always the same time every year. And yet it always surprises us when it shows up. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. There's so we much going on. At the same time every year. So yeah. scheduling things out ahead of time, absolutely. Right. I think scheduling posts is brilliant. And especially if there are certain things that you know you want to get out there, like your mm -hmm. concert advertising, mm -hmm. or if you want to celebrate John Philip Sousa's birthday, you know, again, that comes the same time every year, schedule <laughs> the post, and then right. it's set and forget. Forget. You just let it go. Right. It happens. And look, you have a successful social media campaign. Check there that out. There you box. go. And you don't have to do it all. I mean, I think you have to remember to start small and try it for, for maybe your concerts or your holiday concerts. And then as you get more comfortable with it, then you can, you can grow with it, I'm sure. And there were some questions I had later on in some of my questions that I uh, sent to you. And one of them was, are these the kind of things that you are trained to do? Are these the things that you come in to whoever the commander was that did it a certain way and then you change? I mean, that's like what band directors deal with and, and teachers, anything. You come in and, and, but I didn't know, is that something you kind of have to continue the way it is? Do you, do you, are you allowed some creativity within your position? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, bo bottom line, uh, we, we have our mission, our job to do, which, which again is honor, inspire and connect. We are two halves of the mission. It's outreach, which is going to be our, our concerts, the traditional band concert that most people think of, and then ceremonial and that's funerals, it's promotion ceremonies, it's retirement ceremonies, it's arrival ceremonies, it's any number of different things. Mm -hmm. um, so, but within, so I have to do those things. Yes. But within the, those parameters, I, I have a great deal of flexibility on how I want to go about doing business. Mm -hmm. Now, I am incredibly lucky in my current assignment that I am following on not one, but two previous commanders who did things very, very, very well. So I, I don't feel like I have to go in and fix anything in right. my organization. Yeah. Now, I absolutely understand that that's not always the case. And I've seen that in my short time in the Air Force, where some things sometimes get a little mm -hmm. sideways and, and need to get back on track. And sure. of course, in band programs, whether it's a school program or a community program, you, you know, maybe there's a decision of, you know what, We've been doing things this way for a little while, and it's it's time for us to shift gears. Mm -hmm. right. So I know for me, with, with my folks, one of the things that we're working on right now specifically is social media engagement, because my organizations, um, they're, they're doing it, and they're doing it well, but they're not doing it fre frequently enough for mm -hmm. us to actually pop up on folks' news feeds. That's kind of the challenge with social media is that yep. with the different algorithms on the different platforms, there's a frequency of posting that keeps you active on people's news feeds. And it's, it's different for each platform. Um, YouTube, the ideal is once a week. I'll be honest with you, my organizations are not posting on YouTube once a week. It, it, it's just too much for us to do because those are usually very highly polished products. Yep. Facebook, the ideal is one to two times a day. And again, right now, wow. My organizations are not doing that. That's just not something that we're capable of doing with everything else. So we set smaller goals, different goals. And that, that's what we're working on right now is kind of some of those intermediate goals so that we are not just shouting into a void. Because uh, if you put up a post and nobody sees it, where, right. where are your efforts going? So that's part right. of the challenge with social media as well. Sure, sure. Well, thanks for sharing all that because those are the things that, you know, are the deep things that, that we need to be talking about. Um, a couple things and we'll let you go on into your next. Um, someone said that they use their community college for graphics and their department and for printing. And it's a much less expensive, uh, reasonable pricing. Um, that's a, and we do that too. It's really great and it's beautifully done. Um, another person says they access their local television station. They create videos to use as promotions. Um, there's probably other resources that people have throughout their communities like this. So please, I would like you to, to go on now. We were talking about the Facebook and virtual. So thank you. Sure. Yes. So um, uh, th this next slide, I'm going to uh, just touch on very briefly, but this is one where we were able to engage virtually with our audience during COVID. We did this very early on in COVID where we actually invited students uh, of us. I think we said anywhere from fifth grade up through 12th grade, although I can't remember the exact age range. 
and we said, if you're interested, submit uh, a video of you playing your part. Please do provide the other part uh, of your music. <laughs> and we we thought we were only going to get a little bit of interest. So we said, we're, we're going to post 10 of these duets on our social media. We ended up getting over 200 submissions. <laughs> and so a lot of kids were home. <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was so fantastic. And so we, we, there was just not enough space on our social media to post all 200. So what we did is we, we provided a video for every student who sent wow. something in. So we cool. gave that to them and said, you may have this, you can put this on your social media. Uh, but then we highlighted 10 of, of our favorites. So the two, these two, one was this young lady playing trombone who, man, she's just, she's a rock star. She's going places. If she chooses to, to follow music as a career, I, I mean, we're all, we're all going to be Excellent. better for it. So that was just a ton of fun. And then the, the young man on the lower part of the screen, he was a beginning band student and he was playing La Bamba. And it was adorable because we decided instead of just having one trumpet with him, as you can see, we had the entire airman of note trumpet section. So our jazz band oh, section cool. performed with this young man. And it was just so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so re really just a lot of fun. And, and again, a different way to engage. Now, one thing that I think is important to talk about as well, when we're, when we're engaging on social media, Facebook especially, Instagram's a little different, YouTube's a little different, every, again, every platform's a little different, but on Facebook, because of the frequency of posting, having some things that are really nice and polished are very good, but as you, this is a screenshot from a video, um, so again, the quality is not great because it's a screenshot, but you can also see a little bit that the video itself is not the best quality. And I can tell you a shot on a cell phone. It was actually this vocalist's husband. And if, if you look at the view count, wow. 3 million views on a mediocre cell phone video. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I, when I, this was, we did this when, um, when I was in Washington, DC, and I would talk with my social media team all the time to try to understand why some posts do really well and others don't. You can see from the date that this is just after, after the 4th of July, she's singing God bless America at a Washington nationals game and posting this right around the 4th of July. It just, I think people were feeling really patriotic and everyone just wanted to watch this video, but this ended up being this cell phone video was the most successful post on Facebook that the Air Force band had last year. Wow. Isn't and so I, I point that out because we want polish. We want things to be good. The sound has to be good because that that's our brand as, as musicians, right? Right. Right. But the videos don't always have to be polished. And that goes back to the authentic experience that mm -hmm. people want. And people understand that it's not always lights and camera and everyone's smiling. And so sometimes right. a little bit of that grit can be very popular. Yes. And I, I think that makes people feel a little bit better knowing, hey, we can put some different quality of video on mm -hmm. there. Right. Where I, again, where I draw the line is because we're musicians and that's, that's our number one brand. It's got to sound good. The, 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 the audio at least has to be good enough to hear the quality performance that's right. going on. And if you were to find this video and listen to it, you would hear, I mean, she's, she's singing spectacularly. That, that's part of why I think this post was so successful. Okay. Absolutely. But that's a, that's a very good point. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, one of the questions, and I, I just want to say it so it's in your, your thought process. Uh, the rules for following copyright and broadcast rights when you post performances on social media. I mean, there's those that we all learned pretty fast once uh, COVID hit and we were all home trying to still connect with community. Um, there are, there definitely are. So how do you handle that? Or where do you want to talk quickly about that? Yes. So we, anything that we post, if it's not public domain, we do obtain the synchronization rights for those. And depending on the platform and depending on uh, the how it's being used is how the rights are charged. Some organizations, depending on who owns the copyright, are really easy to work with and it's relatively inexpensive. Um, some organizations are very challenging to work with or it's very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also, uh, so, and part of the, the magic of TikTok 
the, the, the reason why TikTok videos are as short as they often are, uh, and I, I'm going to have to double check the copyright because this is, again, we're, we're always learning, we're always trying to catch up, but I think you can play 15 seconds of something before copyright actually clicks oh, into play. So that's why TikTok yeah. videos are so short. So That's interesting right. enough a, on that one. Um, yeah, now, look into that. again, we in the Air Force Band, we get the synchronization rights for everything that we do. Um, so we, if we cannot obtain the copyrights, if we cannot obtain the synchronization rights, if it's too expensive, we right. won't post the video. Right, right. Well, that's fair. That's really fair. Um, and I can say for people who are listening and future people that listen to this, that Association of Concert Bands uh, does have an ACB Connects program that we did just like this uh, about the various kinds of rights that you need uh, for live performances, for virtual performances. So you just go on our website and uh, look that up. And it's a really great uh, one to listen to. And the interview was really, really well done. The people that did it knew what they were talking about and they were trying to help the members of our association. So find yourself to our website and that'll help. Um, another thing that came up in, in the um, chat is um, much of the audience uh, this, of this person are older folks and that they um, don't use social media. Um, it said that people were asking, are you gonna continue to put posters up and things like that? And I know my answer to that would be to have to find a balance between the two styles of how you're advertising um, and letting people know, don't forget that, go out and still do some of the things you've always done. It's awful easy to want to do one or the other, uh, but you still need to do that. Christy, what would you say to that? So I, while there are some folks who are still not on social media, and I would say that that's across all age demographics, because I know some, some younger folks who are not on social media, just as well as I know some older folks who are not on social media. But at the same time, my mother-in-law is on Facebook constantly. So <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't assume that our older audience members aren't on social media. Um, but you're absolutely right. When you do an advertising campaign, you have to make sure that you are casting a wide net. And that's something that we in the Air Force do. We don't do just digital advertising. We will still advertise in newspapers. We'll advertise in magazines. We'll do radio advertising, um, mm -hmm. and we, uh, given the opportunity, if we can get on local television as well. So we'll we'll cover all of our bases. And, and yeah. so social media is great. A lot of people are on social media, but yes, it is definitely not everybody. That's right, that's right. Good, good, good. Uh, feel free to continue on. Okay, uh, so we're going to talk just a little bit about YouTube next. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, we in the Air Force Bands, we focus on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, well, the reason why I wanted to talk about YouTube a little bit in this context, this was a, a success story that we we literally stumbled upon with the band in D.C. So for, for folks who maybe aren't, aren't aware, I was with the band in D.C., up until June of this year. And so I, I recently started my new assignment uh, at the beginning of July with my new bands. And so a lot of the experiences I'm talking about are from my time in DC, but like you all, I'm taking what I learned from that assignment. I, I'm applying it to what I'm doing with my, my new bands. So this particular success story, we found that live streams, while a really great technology, Audiences are not really keen on being on live streams for the entire program. Uh, people like on demand, they, they'll go and they'll go back and watch something. So having a program on demand is valuable. And we decided we wanted to try to do a live stream. We wanted to do it in a way that we were engaging with audiences. So this one is actually the second student live stream that we did. Our first one was over the holidays last year in 2021. This one was from earlier this year uh, around the March time frame. Yep, March 31st is what's on the date. And one thing that was really important about this particular program is that we were engaging with the audience while the show was going on. So you can see those highlighted where we had folks sitting at a computer while the show was going on talking with the audience. We also had polls going on. So we had a, a segment where the MC said, hey, we want someone to ask a question that we're going to answer. Our conductor is going to answer live on the program. <laughs> Type in your questions right now. And, and so kind of like what we're doing here, except right. it was with a, a student live stream. Right. And so um, we, we gathered the questions. A, a question was selected. And so the narrator said, all right, this question is from Sally in Idaho. Uh, the question, Colonel Schofield, what is your favorite 
cookie or I, I don't remember what she was like, <laughs> but um, you know, that was a way for, for that engagement to happen right. live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also had a, a scavenger hunt bingo card. So beforehand, <laughs> we, we had people register so that they could get the link and we gave, we put together a bingo card. And on this one, this was all about Disney movies and Broadway and, and all of that. And so uh, we, we the, it was all about looking for the, the Disney characters. Uh, we, so I think we had an Olaf that they had to find. We, we had little <laughs> stuff hidden all yeah. over. And, so, and of course, our camera Fine. folks who were Bainsmen knew when to just kind of show. And so people mm-hmm. would be typing in the chat, oh, I found Olaf, he's right there <laughs> on the piano. And it was, yeah. it was so oh, that's great. Cute. And what was really neat about this, you can see on the view count, live streams, even with the Air Force Band in DC, DC, we would usually not get more than a couple hundred views on a live stream. We were able to get 3,400 uh, wow. views, wow. which is incredibly successful for a live sure. stream for us. Now, other right. organizations might have different ways of doing it that are better, but this, this way, we and it's, it's that constant engagement sure. that we found made it successful. Sure. Uh, and it really, it was fun for us. And we got a lot of great positive feedback from the students and teachers who were involved with these programs. And I'm going to assume that they will do something like this again in the future be- because it was so successful. So was the information put out to uh, area or not area, but the United States schools that this was happening and that they could be part of it? Or were you actually giving a live concert that was being streamed in a school? How, what was the setup ahead of this? That, that's a great question. So we were in our rehearsal hall uh, in Washington, oh. D.C. So we were filming live. We, we had a few things that were pre-recorded, but we were, we were filming live so that they could see what was going on in the moment. Mm-hmm. That's how we could do the okay. polls and then announce the polls during the concert. Sure. And that's how we could ask for questions and then actually answer the question on the concert. And the way that we advertised it, we, we did this uh, two different ways, because again, we have to cast a wide net. First, we put it on our social media page. We put it on our Facebook. Now, we we are lucky enough, uh, or the DC band, they have um, 190,000 followers, I think. So wow. it's, it's a pretty wide net right there on their social media page. But then on top of that, our team also contacted schools with whom we'd had a relationship in the past. So whenever the yeah. band would go out on tour, we're always engaging with schools. And so we have a database of contact information. And so we just sent them information and say, hey, we're doing this on this day at this time. We'd love for you to be involved. And and most educators were really excited to be able to take advantage because in in March of even this year, there were still a lot of folks. Some people were virtual, some people weren't. And so this was a really good opportunity for programming for educators to to give them a break from from everything that was going on that time of year. Absolutely. Oh, such great stuff. Oh my goodness. This is fabulous. Okay. Uh, continue, please. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the, the live engagement uh, strategies, which we discussed earlier, but I'll go back through them again. And, and if there are more questions that pop up, we can certainly explore mm-hmm. those a little bit more deeply. So we already talked about the pre and post concert mingle, uh, getting people out there, asking them questions. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you for coming. I love this gentleman on the right hand side in in the very patriotic eagles and flags. And and you can see he's got his hat that says Vietnam vet. So he's, he's a proud veteran. And so what a great opportunity for, that's one of our vocalists to just go up to him and speak with him and have a great conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'll, I'll move on from that just because we had already talked about that quite a bit. Audience immersion. This is an incredible technique that I I highly recommend y'all take advantage of if it works for you and your organization. And there's a couple different ways to do this, but let me first talk about this picture. This this picture is a little deceiving because you might look at it and say, I see a bunch of military members in uniform. But if you look carefully, you've got this guy who looks a little confused. You've got this guy who's playing on his phone and kind of smirking. You've got this woman who's smiling, but and looks like she's recording. You've got this woman who's just kind of looking and like, all right, what's going on over here? And then you've got this woman here in the middle. And she is actually the entire reason why this performance was happening. This is Chief Master Sergeant Bass, who is the Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. She's the highest ranking enlisted member in the Air Force. And we brought her into our building 
to, to literally do an immersion. We took her around to hear all of the different groups and the, the capstone uh, performance is in the concert band and we will put extra chairs in the concert band. And so the members get to sit and listen and see what's actually going on. And what you can't see in this photo that I'll actually share with you in a couple more slides, there's a, a video going on behind the conductor that is timed to the music that the musicians are playing. So it, it truly is a fully immersive experience. Now, you might not have the, the it, with COVID, it, this might not work for you, or you might not have the space, or your band, maybe you have a huge band, you've got 80 members in your band, and there's just no more room to squeeze one more person on stage. This might not necessarily work for you. But another thing that you can do, if you have a smaller group, I've seen this work very successfully with chamber groups and also with jazz bands. If you've got a big stage in a small group, invite your audience up on stage mm -hmm. and just have them right there, sit right in front of you. Uh, and, and that's a really good opportunity to engage your audiences. We see this with orchestras all the time where they'll put audience members in the choir loft. And so the, the audience, they, they get to see that different perspective of actually maybe looking mm -hmm. at the conductor straight on like the musicians do. Yeah. So if that's something that works for you, highly recommend that you take advantage of that. It's it's a really good way to, to make an impact. I think also it allows that kind of a thing for if you have certain people that you might consider as underwriters sometime or various people within your community that you want to prove that what you're doing is has value. But I think that's a great way to invite them to be a guest to come in and, and be immersed within a rehearsal or within a concert or or simply as the one in Santa Fe that we saw where they had the mayor come in and play uh, the Liberty Bell March and he got to hit the bell in the right spot. I mean, those are simple ways, but then he's gonna go out and, and talk about that, me that memory and, uh, and how important that was. So also, also great reasons. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and to that point, when we had Chief Bass out and, and the whole point of having her out and have her listen to all of the different groups was to say, this is your Air Force Band. This is what we can do for you. Mm -hmm. Feel the power of everything that goes on. And she was, I am not embarrassed to say she was floored. She was absolutely <laughs> impressed with everything yeah. that we did. And, and she is a huge band fan now. So if you've got someone that, like you said, an underwriter, get your mayor involved, any other municipal leaders in your community, mm -hmm. absolutely do, do yeah. something like this for them. Um, I, I think it's, it, it's a great idea. And, and along those ways, uh, or along those lines, audience participation, we bring students up on stage to perform with us all the time. Well, again, a lot of this was pre-COVID. We're, we're getting back into it a little bit now, but we're doing mm -hmm. so very, very carefully. Yeah. We will bring audience members up to conduct. Now, sometimes we'll stack the deck. I'll be honest with you. Uh, this middle picture here, the gentleman, is actually the father. If you can kind of see in the lower left-hand corner of this picture, um, there's a saxophone player. Uh, the gentleman conducting is that saxophone player's father, he, who was also himself an enlisted military musician in the army. And so we knew he was a musician. We knew he knew how to conduct. Yeah. So we stacked the deck just a little bit on that one. <laughs> but something that we'll do all the time is we will bring people just out of the blue up on stage, we'll give them a real quick conducting lesson, down, up, down, up, yep. and we have them conduct a march. And we pick mm -hmm, a march yeah. because the band's gonna be able to play it no matter what. Um, right. And it's also something really easy to conduct with. Mm -hmm. Audience members love it, by the way. It, 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 it hits every single time. Um, and then, you know, get maybe have a little dance party going on up there. You can see this vocalist <laughs> dancing with, with the little girl and her unicorn, just having a really good time. So th these are just a couple different ideas on how to involve your audience in, in the pro performance. And even the audience members who are not involved on stage in these moments, they really appreciate seeing these other folks getting up there. And it really does create a great memory um, for everybody in the audience, on stage, musicians alike. So I, I definitely recommend that you take advantage of some of these. Wonderful. Now, Absolutely. I also, recommend using cell phones because people have them people you they're, they're going to be out anyway and as you can see uh and i've got at the end of my presentation i i have some some links and resources available for you but if if you take out your phone and you take out your camera and you go ahead and scan this qr code and click on the link 
it's going to take you to my presentation, a downloadable PDF version. And this is a very simple way to get your program to mm -hmm. your audience members. You just, you put up a QR code and these QR codes, you can put them on literally anything. You can put it on paper. You can put it on a screen. I've had them put on military coins. Um, you, you can put these oh, cool. absolutely anywhere and they work and it's infinitely variable. So you, I, I put my presentation up on here. I said, oh, I made a change, took down the old one, put up the new one. Now it's ready to go again. Right. So you and can I understand you can it's not hard to do either. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt it's not. you. It, it's not. That's oh, no, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. From your presentation, I brought it to mine and they've already done it. I'll tell you more about that. But uh, I just want people to know it's it's pretty simple to do. It, it, it really is. And I, I, I do want to really reiterate that because I am not technologically savvy at all. And so when I decided I wanted to integrate this technology into my presentation, I, I asked my team, I said, all right, how do I do this? And they, they sent me to the website and I was able to figure it out very, very quickly and easily. And what's nice is there are a lot of different QR code generating options out there. You can see the one that I chose to use, but there are a lot of options out there. A lot of them are free. There are also paid versions depending on what you want. Um, there, so I would say if, if a QR code is something you're interested in using, which I would recommend because it's there's so many great options there. Um, research what's available and what works for you and your organization, because it, whatever price point you're at, whatever kind of uh, whiz bang features you want or don't want, if you want it really simple, there's something out there for you. I, I promise right. you that. Right. And, and I'll just interject. Uh, one person in chat said they use it all the time for donating, quick donations uh, right there while they're sitting there, you know, mention it uh, however you want to mention it. And then people can just do what you just had us do and do, 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 there's your 20 bucks or whatever, you know, that they're donating, which is a really nice way to do it. Another thing we're using it for this year is we're trying it for the first time. And that is to actually have a card that we're going to reuse that has the QR code on it. And, and that's what they're being given when they come into the theater. So they hit that. And then it's everything that we have, not only their program, but it has the donations. It has how to get to our website, how to do this, what the next program, what the next concerts are. And then they can just save it too. Uh, it's just, it's that new way. And we will have some programs, some paper programs <coughs> for the people who don't want that. But uh, it's just another way to do it. And it's kind of a step of faith at first for some of you, for us to try it, but you know, you try it and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you go back the other way, but it's certainly gonna be cheaper uh, for the cost of printing programs. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and you're right, it is a leap of faith. And I know um, for us in the Air Force, it took me a while to really talk people into to really jumping into this because the, the argument, and it's a good argument, not everyone mm -hmm. has a smartphone. And, and that's why having a few paper programs, I think is important mm -hmm. for folks who don't have smartphones, right. but it's also a great, again, audience interaction conversation opportunity. I was at a summer concert last year at the Air Force Memorial, and there was an older gentleman who, uh, he was not really mobile, but I, he, he stopped me because I was in uniform. He said, how do I get the program? I, I don't understand how to get this on my phone. He had a smartphone, but he didn't understand how to get it. So okay. I said, hey, do you trust me to take your phone for a quick second? There's a QR code over here. I'm gonna scan it for you, then I'll show you how this works. And he said, yes. So he, he watched me, I, I walked over to where the QR code was posted. I took the, you know, I scanned it, brought it up on his phone and was able to help him and talk him through everything and say, this is how you do it. When you see this in the future, this is how it works. So it was, it was a really nice moment just to interact with that gentleman and, and, and again, thank him for coming to the concert and, and the sure, normal sure. things I do with, with audience members. And that might be a way for, if you're going to try this, and thank you for mentioning it, that I might have a few people out in the audience to help people because that might be, a, or even just do it at the beginning of the concert and share tell them how to do it. Um, yep. Yeah, absolutely. And, and nowadays, I don't know about where it is where you live, but almost every place you go for restaurants now or anything, you they don't have the, the menus anymore. Everything is this. So I think most people, no matter how old you are, do know how to use the QR codes. So yeah. Yep. Thank you. They're they're making a huge resurgence. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So Good. moving on, one thing I wanted to uh, share with you all. So I, I mentioned before with that emerging with cheap ass 
that there was a video going on where we couldn't see. <clears throat> and this is a video that we put together ourselves. And it, we call it a mission video because it, it talks about all the different things that Air Force bands do. And I wanted to play just, it's about five minutes. So I'm not gonna play the entire thing okay. because I, I wanna make sure that we get to more questions and, and get through the rest of the presentation, but give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do using videos. And so what this is, we, you're, you're gonna hear the audio but when we performed it live, the band was the audio. And so they saw the video and it was timed with the, the video. So the, and the, the conductor had an in-ear click, which is something you can do with uh, some audio technology. So let me just show you just, just a, a, maybe a, a minute of this. of an idea. Uh, again, it's, it's a very long video. I don't want to show you the whole thing. But what I want to point out is all of that imagery that you saw was recycled from something else, all of the video, all of the photo uh, photography. Mm -hmm. So all someone had to do was piece it together. And we had a recording. So we, we pieced it together at the recording. And then someone put in a click track that was in the conductor's ear the entire time and it lines up beautifully and it's it's a really fun thing for the audience to experience with the music uh -huh. absolutely and really if you've started to do virtual things it is like a, the next kind of challenge to try it with your ensemble maybe a good way to uh show what's what your program is next next concert or for your next season or at the end of your season you know there's lots of reasons you could use it in a community ensemble for sure Great. absolutely and, and you can do it more simply than that as well. If you want to integrate video into your program, it doesn't necessarily have to be timed with the music. If that's a little too complicated, you can just show a couple of still shots every so often. Um, and it can be something that's timed or it can be something that you've got someone live triggering. Hey, I'm going to go ahead and right. advance the, the, the photo now. Right. Now. So it, it doesn't it can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. That video that I shared with you. That's definitely more on the complicated side. You, you need to have some technical savvy, some folks who, who have some video editing capability and, um, t and then timing it out with the music. Right. But it doesn't have to be that complicated and it no. can still be very, very effective. It can, yes, for sure. We use a lot of video with or, uh, um, still, still shot pictures with different things that my ensemble does. Um, and there's a lot of ways to do it. And it's really fun to do if you choose to do it. Some people use it all the time. Some people just use it on certain songs. So yeah, good. Thanks, Kristen. Absolutely. And audiences love it. They do. Uh, so talking a little bit about integrating star power, this is, this is something that depending on your organization, and, and again, this is all about who you know, um, it can just create a little bit more interest for your audience. So you can bring in a guest MC which is something that we in the Air Force bands do all the time. This particular mm -hmm. person, if you're a West Wing fan, you might recognize Melissa Fitzgerald. She played Carol on the West Wing. Mm -hmm. um, maybe your organization doesn't have a connection to that kind of a, a star power, but my band is getting ready to do an uh, a performance in September, mid-September, and our guest MC is the la local classical radio host who is pretty well known in this area. So he's a local celebrity. When I was stationed in San Antonio, we had one of the local TV anchors come and MC our program all of the time. And so it doesn't, you don't have to get big national stars necessarily, but you might know somebody, you might have a connection to be able to pull in some of that star power. You can also bring in guest artists. And I know a lot of organizations, community bands uh, will bring in people from their local university, some of the professors who are there, 
Maybe, you know, uh, there was a student that you had at one point who went off and did great things. I went to, a, I taught at a high school in Colorado and I, I did not teach this young lady, and which is why I can't remember her name, unfortunately, but she was one of those urban legends that we all talked about. Uh, when Wicked first got really popular, uh-huh. the, um, the person who played, I think it was, I think it was Elphaba, but I can't remember. One of the two main leads, female vocal leads, the touring show right. was a graduate from the high school where I taught. And so how fun would it have been had I been able to capitalize on that relationship while I was there to bring her back as a guest artist with one of our concerts. So right. you never know who you might know. So in, in this particular photo on the right, we, we just happen to have some connections with Kelly Pickner, Pickler, Chris Jansen and Malika Andrews. Uh, Malika was on uh, a host on uh, ESPN um, so that we were able to integrate them into our shows. And the cool thing about COVID and COVID technology, um, so Malika was there live with us. Chris Jansen was live with us, but Kelly joined us virtually. And so we actually recorded her part ahead of time. And then the band played live with her recorded vocals. So there, there's a lot of different ways to be able to integrate in star power that make it a little bit more uh, financially feasible for folks. Uh, if, if you Absolutely. can't get people to donate their time, you can say, well, instead of traveling out here, why don't we record you ahead of time and, and we can match up your performance with us? Right, exactly, exactly. Absolutely. These are all wonderful things. And I've seen so many fabulous things done by bands all over the nation, all over the world like this, and you get great ideas, but these are absolutely uh, the kind of things that sometimes you just have to make the effort and give it a try. And then you're like, wow, this, I've, I've got people in my band to help me do it. That's what you got to look for. So, and and sometimes asking the question is all you need to do is like, if you have an idea and you want to collaborate with someone, ask the question. The answer there might be no. And if the answer is no, then that's fine. At least you've asked the right. question, but right. the answer might be yes. You never know. You never know. Yeah. I have a gentleman on in uh, the chat right now. They were asking if a QR code could be put on Facebook and the answer was answered. Yes, uh, that is something you can do. And then another question or was statement is uh, they're doing a video with one of our selections using the ION uh, concert media. They have a lot of licensed videos to go along with uh, the published music. So there's uh, other things out there besides just using the music you have and trying to figure it out yourself. So and they and they put the link up for people to use. Thanks, Paul. Wonderful. Oh, perfect. Thank okay. You. Terrific. Okay. Um, all right. Um, go ahead. Go on. That's, these are great. The star power. Go all ahead. right. So we're we're getting close to to the end on this. So talk, let's talk about a little bit about creating a curated experience. And right. this is an idea that I actually got from a presentation that I had the opportunity to attend back at the beginning of the year, where the vice president of uh, audience and audience experience and marketing. Oh, I think it's marketing and audience experience. I, I don't remember the order, but he came and gave a presentation uh, at a, a conference I happened to attend. And he was from the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. And pre-COVID, they came up with this, this great idea that they are relaunching this fall. Uh, and I hope it's incredibly successful for them because it's a brilliant idea. And they call it SLSO Crafted. So it's creating this curated experience. And the way that they are approaching this is they're putting together an hour long program and it's it's a curated evening. So it's not just the concert. So it starts off before the concert and there's almost like a pre-concert lecture, but it's, it's really informal. You have your craft beer. So they're partnering with the local craft uh-huh. brewery. They've got some food from local restaurants as well. So you've got your food, you've got your beer, and we're talking about what we're getting ready to hear. I, I, the example that the gentleman gave us was they were talking about Brahms. So, hey, we're doing a Brahms concert. Let's talk a little bit about Brahms while we're drinking our craft beer and eating our cheese and, and whatever our, our food is. Then they move into the concert experience itself. And again, it's an hour long and everyone's already like nice and relaxed because they understand what's going on. They understand what they're getting ready to listen to. I believe there was probably going to be some talking from the stage as well, continuing that interaction of, all right, hey, remember we were talking about this? We're, this is what it kind of sounds like. Here's the theme. Listen to it in the greater context of this. And then when the concert was over, they continued into the after party, where again, they partnered <laughs> with local businesses uh, to provide adult beverages, non-adult beverages, um, 
lights, food, and then the orchestra members themselves would come out and interact with the audience. And so they could talk more about what they experienced. As, again, it's that pre and post concert uh, mm -hmm. mingling. But it was right. this whole arc of an evening of a, create, a curated experience. And the idea of a curated experience, I think you can make that whatever you want it to be, but the, it's the idea that you're creating something um, and it's, it's not just kind of a, hey, we're gonna give you a band concert. It's more of a, and we do this a little bit already. We have themes of, of concerts, and, sure. and but you really lean into it from the moment that the audience comes in the door all the way out so that it's it's completely immersive. It's not just when the lights go down to when the lights come up, but really in you know from parking lot to parking lot, they have this entire right. experience. Wow. Wow. Oh. So they could be there live or they could be there virtually. Is that the whole point? I, I don't I think pre-COVID the idea wasn't what they they weren't doing it virtually. Now that COVID is kind of a thing, they're they're relaunching it this fall. So I don't know mm -hmm. exactly what their plans are. I think it is envisioned more of a, a live event, but I could absolutely see it being a virtual event as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know I had a, um, a former student who was working with a, a symphony in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area, and they started doing this during it. And you had to buy a, a online ticket, which then there was uh, someone who brought you dinner. They brought you wine to your door. And then you got to see the live stream of whatever it was that was being streamed. And at that point, I think it was a small chamber group because it was still really locked down, you know, but how creative is that? I mean, they still were doing things to con connect that audience and the uh, people um, with uh, and, and with the food <laughs> and the community, you know, it was really cool. It's a great idea. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely brilliant. I love that. Yeah, for sure. Sure. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, OK, well, and uh, that, that brings me. To, to, to the end of, of my presentation. Um, so if, if and we, I'm sure there are more questions that, that right. we can talk about. Right, right. Well, I have a question that came up uh, from the pre-registrations of this whole program. And um, one of the questions was, uh, what do you feel is the purpose of a non-military community band? What is your opinion on that? That, that's a great question. And I think that goes back to what we talked about way at the beginning of this, of, of what is your definition of success? And I think community bands have many purposes and, and can really serve a bunch of different roles. Um, first and foremost, it provides lifelong music. I mean, that, that was the theme of the um, ACB convention this year, music for life. Mm -hmm. We, we, we want to provide that opportunity for people to perform and to listen to music through mm -hmm. all stages of their lives. I think it's a great way to connect with a community, to be a part of that arts community. The One of the community bands I had the privilege of being a part of in Colorado, uh, the Thornton Community Band, mm -hmm. was an integral part of the Thornton community. And, and so whenever there was something big going on in that town, the band was there. there they also had a community chorus. So the yeah. chorus was there as well. And it was just a great way to be a part of everything that was going on. Um, it's a great way to advance great art. So if the, your definition of success for your community band is that you're playing those big, heavy hitting pieces of music, right. we're advancing the art of wind band music. And if we don't, who does? Because exactly. there aren't many professional bands out there. So there are professional orchestras, there's some professional choruses, professional chamber groups, but outside of the military professional bands, we have some paper service bands. Um, or folks that do charge for, for concerts and some people that are able to pay some of their members, but a full-time professional band is not really something that we have in our country. And so we have to take the opportunity to advance the great art that is wind band music. And so I think right. that is absolutely a purpose of community band. And to that end, I, I'll tell you, there is some music that I will probably never program with my Air Force band because there's just certain, we, we're, we perform music with the purpose of presenting a message. And that message has to do with the United States Air Force. It has to do with the military. It has to do with the United States, things along those lines, very patriotic. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of really good music being written out there that isn't necessarily in line with the messaging that I'm required to send with the Air Force. So mm -hmm. community bands, have that flexibility to pro program some of that really great music 
that I might not be able to put in front of an audience. And so I think that's incredibly important as well. True, so again, true. it just goes back to what, what is your definition of success? And right. that's your purpose for your community. Absolutely. And one of the things as the president of this uh, association that I would encourage um, is it comes down to what are the ultimate goals of each of your, of your own ensemble, you know, and I would encourage you to perhaps revisit your band's mission statement if you have one um, or create one if you don't. Um, it's not only for the conductor or for your board of directors, but it's really for every band member that they need to kind of remember what that is. If they've been in the band a long time, they might not even know anymore, <laughs> you know, uh, it helps them soak it in. So, you know, revisit that maybe at the beginning of your season uh, to talk about your mission statement and your season theme and, and your concert goals and, and ask them what theirs is. I mean, hopefully they all have a reason. Maybe they're there to get better at their own individual playing, or maybe they're there because their child uh, started band. I mean, there's lots of reasons why people join community bands, but I would in encourage you to do that as well. So, um, and I, I, I'm in my conclusion, uh, Christy was, uh, you know, you, you talked about the authentic experiences, something real that touches their emotions or their beliefs, something different. And you went through and talked about how that might happen. That was wonderful. Curated that well-crafted program. Sometimes, you know, it depends on what kind of group you are or, or how organized you want to be, really. Uh, there's ways to do this and there's ways to just let it be what it is as well. It doesn't have to be that, but to get the message across if you have one is really important. Um, that decision autonomy, is, uh, I really liked that. That was something new for me to really just chaw on a little bit and think about. Um, and then just to be a part of it, to be, be in, interacting, uh, you know, all of these kinds of things. Um, I think all of this that you've brought to us, it helps us not only realize that there's new things, but there's a lot of things that we do and we don't think through it. And you've, you've brought that to light today. And I, and I greatly appreciate your efforts as well as your organization. You're just a delightful human being. And I'm so oh. proud of you to, to be part of our um, you know, United States Air Force, to be sharing this with the world is, is also something really important. As an educator, I know your band directors, I'm sure are very proud of you. Uh, that's important that you're out there sharing the way you are too. So um, my, my last question to you, and that is, why do we do all this? Why are we as musicians compelled to share with community audiences? Why? Why do you think? What's your answer to that? Oh, that is a, a great question. <clears throat> I, I think because sharing art is a, is a very core condition of being human and creating art, sharing it, engaging with others, humans are social creatures and music is that one universal language that everyone understands at every level at any point in their lives regardless of background upbringing language anything and so to create and share that art is is part of what it means to be a, a member of the human race absolutely that's so well put it's exactly right even if they don't speak the language of the speaker let's use the Ukraine for an example, we still, they, they could feel the love that we were sending through just playing their national anthem. Uh, this is true about anything. So again, Christy, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and we're, uh, congratulations on your new post. We're really uh, pleased that you're moving on for that. And uh, we just wanna thank you so much. Um, I would also like to offer a special thanks to our ACB Connects team. They put this all on and we'll continue to have this posted. Um, We'd like to let you know that the ACB resources can be improved. And there are topics that would help you and your community and your band thrive if they're out there. We, we have a, a way now of asking some questions. You should have recently received an email invitation uh, to complete an input form. There might be topics that, uh, you know, who in the music world would you like to hear from? These are ways, like we got Christy, was that helped us uh, get people some information that happened at our convention and now many of you are have this and we can put it on our, our website. Do you have technical needs that could that we could help you with and, and help find for your band? Uh, that's, that's what we're here for. ACB is here for that completely. Uh, if you have trouble finding the email that was sent to you uh, earlier this week uh, to complete this questionnaire, we're interested in providing the input for, please send an email to, and I'll say this slowly, ACB at acbands.org to request the link to go and uh, fill out this form. I did it a couple days ago and it took me maybe three or four minutes. So there's a little time involved, but it's going to help us better serve you, of course. 
uh, for the links mentioned today and to access all previously recorded sessions of ACB Connects, please visit our ACB website homepage at acbands.org. You'll also find information about becoming an ACB member, details on future sessions of ACB Connects, and a wealth of other resources. We'd also love to have you follow us on all the things Christy talked about, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spotify, and to have you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for being with us today for this special opportunity to form new connections with you. And we'll look forward to having you join us again at ACB Connects. Until then, enjoy making and sharing music. Have a good evening. <laughs>